In this video, we're going to take a look at the comp brake from Modular Driven Technologies. Gavin Gu here from UltimateReloader.com. This is going to be an action-packed video. So we've got the comp brake from MDT. We're going to kind of go over the specs. We're going to talk about some of the design details. We're going to install it on this rifle. Then we're going to take it out in the field where we're going to look at both recoil and compensation characteristics. This is going to be a good one. So the comp brake is relatively new. It is a brake from MDT that is aimed squarely at competitors, as the name would indicate. What I've got here is the comp brake in 6.5. So there's a few different versions. We've got 223 and six millimeter in one configuration. We've got 6.5, which I've got here, and there's 308, and then actually there's 338. So what's cool about this brake is it's available in a variety of threadings. So for the 223 and 6, you've got half 28, 5 eighths 24, and 3 quarter 24. And all of the rest of the configurations are available in both 5 eighths 24 and 3 quarters 24. So for instance, I built the 338 Freedom Rifle, right? And I threaded the muzzle 3 quarter 24. This brake would just bolt right on kind of hard to find that threading in certain configs. So I love that detail. It's also self-timing. So this timing net goes up against your shoulder and you can time it, which we'll show just in a few minutes here. And uh, what's curious about this brake, and I think really impressive, uh, I talked to the folks at MDT about this, is how much advanced engineering went into the design. And there were a few key goals. First, we need to reduce felt recoil. That is typically the entire point of a brake. Another side benefit is the ability to adjust compensation with this brake. It's got adjustable compensation ports. Compensators keep muzzle rise down. And so typically how you do that is you vent gases upwards. That pushes the muzzle downwards. And if you get things just right, you'll have fairly neutral muzzle characteristics in terms of muzzle rise. That's a good thing. So I'll show you here real quick. What you can do is loosen these two Torx screws and then you can actually move this plate. And the plate has a, a port change that you can affect by moving the plate up and down, right? You can seal it completely off. You can have just a little bit of, of narrow uh, compensator port showing or you can have it pretty much wide open. So why is that important? Well, if you want to be able to spot trace and if you want to see your impacts and spot your misses, you don't want a lot of muzzle rise and you don't want a lot of recoil. You want to keep things as recoil free and as steady as possible. And that can be a huge competitive advantage. Uh, knowing where your shots went for incremental follow-ups and for validations of hits, that sort of thing is, is absolutely crucial. The other thing that's interesting about this design is the ports. It's a four port design and MDT used some advanced fluid dynamics modeling like finite element modeling in, in CAD software uh, to be able to analyze how to break up the blast wave, right? That concussion that you feel slapping you in your face. And actually after a while it can be so bad that it can give you a headache. Just try 50 BMG, right? You'll get there in a few shots. Well, if you're shooting a PRS match, you can, you can definitely get that with something like, you know, a six Creedmoor or a 308, whatever it is you happen to be shooting. So lots of engineering, lots of really fine design details. I kind of like the two-tone with the green. It's kind of a unique looking break. Okay, so that's kind of a bit of a tour and an overview of the specs and features. Next, let's get it installed on my rifle. So when it comes to this kind of job, I like to use a vise, and this is pretty much the best vise you're gonna find, the orange vise. It's got special jaws that work with Arca. So we can basically just clamp the rifle down, and then hopefully the level is close enough. I'm gonna use the scope cap. You can see where that's cutting the bubble in half, basically, on the line on this side. So I'm gonna go for the same thing when we put the brake on. So I'm gonna put some TW25B grease on the threads. 5 8 24, it's pretty much a standard threading for 
your 65 Creed type stuff. We've got the nut all the way against the, the brake. This shoulder nut, we're going to screw it on and see where that lands. Okay, obviously that's not where we want it. We have to back it off until we are close. I'm going to have it a little bit on this side and then we're going to rob the level. And this does not need to be as exact as something like a scope reticle. And we're just going to tighten it until, yeah, that is great. Perfect. Okay, and I tightened down the screws. I've got the compensator ports fully open. We're ready to go shooting. So shooting with the comp brake on this rifle was awesome. I did a couple different types of shooting and it's a little bit hard to quantify, but I, I do think I felt a reduction in that concussive force that comes back from a conventional brake. Now, the ideal way to test that would be to do an entire PRS match where you've got a round count approaching 100 rounds or 80 rounds, whatever that happens to be, depending on the course of fire that you are participating in. And what I did then was to shift to my scientific testing with our recoil rig. Now, let me explain this recoil rig. It was originally inspired by the design and basically Cal Zant from the Precision Rifle blog laid out the blueprint for this. The whole goal is to capture rearward forces at the buttstock at a high enough data rate to be able to quantify very concretely and very repeatably the recoil over time for a variety of different scenarios, different cartridges, different rifles, different buttstock rubber compounds, different muzzle devices like suppressors and brakes. We've done quite a bit of testing now and we've proven that this rig is really the only way that you're going to see what happens instantaneously. You're going to see a lot of sort of sled tests or pendulum tests. Those might be good at capturing sort of the overall net recoil result in terms of what we would call area under the curve, but there really is a lot more to the story. So the recoil rig is a steel frame We've got a load cell and data acquisition system that captures data at 20,000 force readings per second. This is high enough for resolution to see what's interesting about recoil for a particular setup. And we started with the bare muzzle and got a baseline. And we get some interesting things here, including the curve that you can see here. And then we can very easily derive things like peak forces. Peak forces for this particular rifle on the recoil rig was 745 pounds rearward. Then came the comp brake. You can see right here, we're cutting that recoil way down. Peak forces come way down, and then if you look at the area under the curve, that obviously comes way down as well. This makes a huge difference when you're behind the gun and driving it, especially off of something like a barricade when you're doing positional shooting. You want to be able to spot trace, you want to be able to spot your hits and misses, and, and also not get beat up, right? The forces and the, that concussive blast are both parts of that equation. So with the comp brake, peak forces were 437 pounds. So that is a 41% reduction, which is huge. Okay, then we threw another brake. It happened to be the brake I had on this barrel to action into the equation. And that is this Area 419 Hellfire brake. It's a little bit more compact, as you can see here. And I would call this roughly equivalent. Peak forces were very slightly lower on the Hellfire. We're talking about 42% reduction compared to 41% reduction. So almost a completely equivalent result with regard to recoil itself. What the Hellfire doesn't have is the tunable compensation ports and some of this advanced design with the concussive blast reduction. There's actually small forward ports that help to break up the signature, if you will, of the blast wave. So, very interesting results, and every time I do testing with the recoil rig, it gives me new ideas. So, a couple things I'd like to do as an extension of this over time. We don't have all the equipment in-house yet. The first is to test the compensation attributes of different setups, a bare muzzle, a suppressor, a brake, and so on and so forth. How can we capture the muzzle rise? And I've got a number of different ideas about how we could potentially do that, all the way from the scientific laboratory setting to the real world shooting 
situation that you're going to actually use the rifle in, right? That is at the end of the day what matters most. Where the laboratory is helpful is where it's hard to get precise information out of that more qualitative field shooting e shooting exercise. Okay, so those are a couple things. And then also the sound level, right? With suppressors, that's a key attribute of testing a suppressor. We don't have that capability in-house. Simple methods of testing noise reduction are fraught with problems. So we're waiting until we can get a setup that is gonna produce repeatable results and might not give you an absolute value, but in the same weather conditions with the same rifle, with the same ammo, could potentially give you a good comparison between multiple muzzle devices with the same ammunition shot through the same rifle in the same atmospheric conditions. That's the hope. But what really compels me about all this is the constant learning. The constant learning about new products, new scientific you know, measurement methods, uh, building the rifles, all of that. So my question to you all is, what do you think of the comp break? Do you have one? Have you used these compensator tuning ports on the top to fine tune how your rifle behaves? What are you using the comp break for? Using it in competition like it's designed for? Are you using it for long range ELR type shooting? Are you hunting with it? Drop a comment and let us know. Of course, make sure that you're subscribed with notifications because we've got a lot more MDT content coming up, a lot more scientific research and test data to share, that kind of thing. That concludes this video, and that means it's time to wrap it up. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, we're on Facebook, YouTube, Rumble, where we've got unrestricted content, and Instagram. Make sure to follow us on all those channels. Ultimate Reloader also has a commercial solutions division serving law enforcement, the military, and the gun industry. We have some unique capabilities, including a comprehensive suite of recoil testing and evaluation capabilities, trigger profiling, and more. If you're interested in custom rifles like what we build here on the channel or gunsmithing services, you're gonna to wanna to go to rifles.ultimatereloader.com and get on the wait list. If you wanna learn lucrative gunsmithing like what I show here on the channel, including building custom rifles and Cerakote plus a whole bunch more, you're gonna to wanna to check out the Colorado School of Trades, schooloftrades.edu. Thanks again for watching.